one year on, of course, from the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Well, the King and Queen, Queen Camilla, had been at Balmoral to commemorate her life. Uh, they made the short journey to Crathy Kirk to attend a private service of thanksgiving and remembrance in honour of the late monarch's 70-year reign. Earlier, the King had thanked the nation for the love and support shown to him and Queen Camilla. And uh, we're joined in the studio by historian and broadcaster David Starkey to reflect uh, on this. And of course, David, you were with us on GB News all those months ago, 12 months ago, which in many ways has gone very, very quickly. Mm. Is today about the passing of the Queen or the first anniversary of the King's accession to the throne? Oh, come, it's both. The whole point is the Queen is dead long live the king. It's the extraordinary smoothness of that transition, which is, I think, the principal glory of our political system. If you compare the terrible handover from Trump to Biden mm. with the extraordinary smoothness and dignity and sense of inevitability. I mean, to, 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 to think about it a little bit more broadly, I think it's taken us this 12 months fully to adjust mm. our minds. I've learned almost to stop calling him Prince Charles. I'm <laughs> beginning to... Do, do you still say, God save slip, the Queen? There's a kind <laughs> of slip. I, when somebody says the Queen, I'm afraid I do not think of a Queen Camilla. No. Um, mm. Similarly... Is that something I, that rankles with you? No, 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 it's, no, it's natural. I mean, you know, no, I was, she's Queen Camilla. That she no, oh, that no, type. no, not at all. Um, I think that, I mean, it's law. Mm. The wife of the sovereign, mm. the wife of, of a male sovereign, mm. is queen. Otherwise, you wouldn't have needed an abdication. Yeah, and, and of course, the king taking the time today to thank the nation for the love and support shown to him and, and Camilla. Indeed. But can we just remember, it is the queen, I mean, Elizabeth, that paved the way to this. She said quite specifically, mm. I trust that Camilla will be queen. I, mean, I think what we forget, you know, we slightly romanticise the Queen, and I know this is the moment to do it. She was, everybody says she cared fundamentally about the Commonwealth. Shall I tell you what she really cared about? Horses? The monarchy. The monarchy. <laughs> she, was a, she was a dynast. Right. She, her entire determination, and you can almost see it, I think we dared slightly to joke at the time, her deliberate decision to die in Scotland mm. and scupper Scottish nationalism. Yeah. Like that extraordinary thing. But she, in every way, smoothed the way right. to Charles' accession. So if we take that on board, do you think we've had a year of unofficial mourning and the bells ringing now at one o'clock at Westminster Abbey to commemorate the King's accession, this will actually ring in the real start of this Carolean age? No, no, I think we saw it straight off. I mean, what's extraordinary is the speed with which the King moved. Um, the Clearly, put it quite simply, it had quite a long time to think about this. Mm. And it was, it's been a series of very carefully calculated moves. My problem is, I think that we've seen roughly three King Charles's. We saw the first King Charles of his first accession speech, the Accession Council, which was, I am going to be a constitutional parliament. This was in James' King. Palace. This was, it was yeah. the broadcast to the nation. Mm. You know, I know I've got to change my ways. Mm. I am going to. Be, it was St James's Palace, and then, of course, that extraordinary decision to appear before a joint session of Parliament in Westminster Hall, in which again he says, you know, he makes a slight joke. The Speaker had already made it. A, another King Charles stood here, you know, about to have his head cut off. Mm. And I am a parliamentary monarch. So that we've seen that King, but we also saw a very different King with this Christmas broadcast, mm. in which is all about this, the star of faith. And then an even more different king in the coronation when he completely broke. And I don't think, although I was covering it, I don't think I fully drove home the extent to which that coronation is wholly unique. Mm. It's the first time since the Glorious Revolution, 1689, which really sets the foundations of the parliamentary monarchy that Charles was referring to. It's the first time that every member of Parliament, every ah, member of the House of attending. Commons, right. and every member of the House of Lords was not attending. Mm. And but I he is more of a frugal 
I don't think well, it's anything to do with, do you with Gallagher. Of course not. Look at the amount of money that was spent on the thing. It was that he wanted, and I think it's unwise, to show a certain separation from politics. Espe well, I, I was going to say the separate, but especially when he is so active on political issues rather than politics itself. Well, this is, I, you see, again, let me... Can we have a little bit of heresy? There's been an awful lot of awful lot of making very solemn statements. Sounds like a good today. book title. Can we just have a little, a little bit of heresy? GB News is about a little heresy. Let's have a little bit of heresy. The king has talked a lot about the things that touch his heart, climate, culture, mm. community. But you know, we have something that is in desperately need of nurture and the king's attention. No. No. I couldn't give a great deal about the Commonwealth. It's our politics. There is a terrible sense of Britain not working very well, that our politics is not working at all well. It's clear, you know, you look at the terrible financial crisis that we're going to, what Nigel is but talking he's, about. he's been very careful, hasn't he, not to dip his toe into No, no, it's not, this months. is not party politics. Mm. If you look at his mother, if you look at his grandfather, if you look at his great-grandfather, the thing they cared about most of all was the functioning of the nation as a whole right. through its politics. That should be his job. David, thank you for a little bit of heresy for the moment. Mm -hmm. More to come throughout the, the afternoon. We won't go too far, of course, in case you get carted off to the tower, <laughs> but for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Uh